Sing it until you know it is so. And our praise is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Sing it into the atmosphere that the powers that be know that he is the Elohim of Elohim. He is the God of gods. He is the Lord of lords. And how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great. Is a God city as the goon, he is a Lord. City as the goon, he is a Lord. City as the goon, he is a Lord.
I want to encourage you, we're not trying to break through. We're singing from the presence of the one who loves us. We are in his presence already. We're not working in here. We enter into the highest place, we enter into the courts of praise, we lift our hands, we lift our voice, we join in with angelic hosts, we enter into the highest place, we enter into the courts of praise, we lift our hands, we lift our voice, we join in and we will shout out your name, King of praise. We'll lift our feet. 
enter into the highest place. We enter into the courts of praise. We lift our hands, we lift our voice. We join in with the angelic hosts and we will shout out your name, King of praise. We lift our feet and dance and we will shout out. sing we'll lift our feet and dance eh? <laughs> dancing is good therapy nothing a good dance can't break off i 
situation of a young lady who's in another nation and just the wheels have fallen apart and we've been trying to get the government involved to get her to be brought home and we're praying over the phone over whatsapp and i said to her mama let's ascend let's just go straight into the courts and just plead mercy and we did that for about five minutes and all of a sudden in my room i just felt this angelic being like poof, land and i recognized him i'd seen him before <clears throat> And, um, and he literally just came to me and just said, and I'm not trying to get political or anything weird like that, but he came to me and he said, your prayers have been heard. Now commission me to Brackenfeld. And I was like, whoa, oh, okay. <laughs> and what I want to just encourage you with, it's not about singing songs, but it's about understanding that we come into his presence and we adore him and we get empowered. I've changed the lyrics of the song because I looked into the nation and I was like, I'm going to get wholly stubborn. I'm going to sing that the king is here and his will is done. So we're going to sing this song again. It's not about whether you vibe with it or you don't, but it's about understanding who you are, where you're stationed in the spirit. And you sing out in heavenly places. And as we do, them that serve the most holy one are commissioned. And things begin to change in our neighborhoods. It's written specifically in the Quigney, into the city, into the nation. But them that serve he who is a living God, they are commissioned and they go and they do the bidding of our master. So I want to encourage you, lift up your eyes. Sing your heart out, but sing from the place of faith, not from the place of hype. Sing from a place of recognizing that you are sons of God and as such, when you speak, even as he spoke, may his light. I don't know if the translation is there, but it just means that we have the living waters, the waters that bring life. That's all it says.
He is God. The Lord is the Lord of Lords. We will not surrender. We will not be condemned to believing he's complacent. He is the Lord. He is the Alpha and the Omega. But he is a God in the middle. He is a God in the peace time. He is a God in the war time. He is God in turmoil. He is God in peace time. We will proclaim that he alone is God. We will proclaim that in every season he is good. He is the Lord over this nation. He is the Lord over this nation. He is the Lord over our nation. He is the Lord over our nation. Just release. Just keep releasing. Hey. Oh. The river's rising. Oh. into a place of honor. Step into a place of honor where you honor what's happening in the room. We honor your presence here, river of God, mighty river of God. We honor your presence in the room. Just start. Let honor rise. Let honor rise. Mighty river of God. We honor you in the room. Come and flood. Come and flood. Now I want you to sing with me. Worthy, worthy. 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 towards him. no other king like him. There's no other river like him. There's no other king like him. There's no other river like him. There is nothing that can satisfy your soul. There is nothing else but him. He is the breath in your lungs. He is the wind in in your back. He is the one propelling you forward. He is the, the absolute blood in your flesh. He is the very air you're breathing right now. He's all that you are. He's all that you are going to be. And He's all that you've ever wanted to be. He is that. He 
is in and through you. The chair you're sitting on, the floor you're standing on, the shirt you're wearing, the pants you're wearing, He is in and through everything. He is in every molecule, in every cell in your body. Everything right now is reverberating with praise, with honor. As I look at you guys, I'm seeing your spirit rising up to meet, to meet with God. Some of you have not met with Him in that way in a very, very long time. Just let it happen. Just let it happen. Your spirit was made to commune with God. Your spirit was made to commune with God. You are.
be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children come on sing it children may his favor may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you he is with you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your dreaming and rejoicing he is for you he is for you he is for you he is for you of the Lord coming from the throne. He is the river that is coming from the throne. He's Jesus is the river that's coming from the throne. He's flowing over your lives, over every situation that, you've, that you're going through. Right now, if it's good, if it's bad, He's flowing through it. And I just see Him pushing back all these boulders, all of these obstacles. He's just pushing it out of the way. And He's um, just a blessing of the Lord is, is flowing through you. So we're going to sing this again. And as we, as we sing the blessing of the Lord, this is His blessing over you. We are going to receive what He has for us. He's, 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 he, he's for us. The Father is so for us. This, the, he's a good Father. He wants, to, he wants to bless us. He wants to bless our families. He wants to have, a, have an abundant life for us. Not just a mediocre life. Not just a, a life with problems. But He wants to blow those problems. He wants to push those problems out. So whatever it is that you're going through, if you feel like, I just feel like some people are carrying some heavy, heavy stuff. I feel depression is going to go out of this church. Depression is going to go out. I feel um, addictions are going to go out. I feel anything just holding you down. Chains are going to break. As you receive the blessing of the Lord, as you receive the blessing of Abba Father, just just picture His face. Picture His face shining on you. Picture His eyes of love just, just staring at you with such pleasure, with such, with such excitement, with such joy. The Father loves you. He's a good Father. Jesus came to show us a good Father. He is the perfect image of the good Father. Let's just receive how beautiful the Father is in the, in the face of Jesus. Let's stare into the eyes of Jesus today as we sing this. May His favor go before you. May His presence be with you. Oh, may His favor go before you in a thousand generations. And your family and your children and their children and their children. May His favor be upon you in a thousand 
generations and your family and your children and their children just picture that and his favor be upon you for a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you he is for you he's 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 for you city on a hill that they were speaking about. That's the evidence of God's kindness right there. That's the evidence. This is the truth. So God, thank you that you have blessed us beyond measure. Come and make us more and more aware of that blessing. Come and make us aware of what we carry, not just for us, but for generations to come. So if you're in a, a state of ableness <laughs> to, to do this, <laughs> just uh, the person next to you, just uh, we, we have COVID regulations. So just next to the person next to you, just say, I bless you with the blessings of God. I bless you. Just in your own words, just bless them. <laughs> you are blessed. <laughs> Wow, that was, (laughs) 
yes, Lord. Thank you for Glenise, Lord. Bless Glenise, Lord. <laughs> you. you are so loved. You are so blessed. The King loves you a lot. Thank you, worship team. You're amazing. B. Rice killing it on the keys. Siswe killing it on the vocals. Dale killing it on the guitar. Dale, I mean, Dale again. Josh. <laughs> Josh killing it on the bass, telling everyone what to do. That's amazing. Paul ripping it up there on the drums. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Auntie Anne. You're the best. <laughs> we, <laughs> ooh, okay, we are going to, I'm being very drunk, sure. We are going to do some um, declarations um, for the offering. Um, I was like, what's the word? <laughs> okay, so um, we, I had a, a very interesting thing happened, was it yesterday? Thursday. Anyway, yes, Friday, Friday. Friday, I've, I've had quite a few financial things happen this year, and it's all right. But on Friday, somebody hacked my account and stole more money. And um, I was just like, I was in this moment, you know, I was like, oh, my word. I want to cry, and I don't know what to do. You know when you get like, I don't know what to do. And then um, we were busy on this. We've got this um, beliefs training that we're doing. And it's all about finances. And it's all about changing the way you feel. And God, because God's got a great view of finances. It's us that's the problem here. So we are realigning. And all of a sudden, I was like, wow, nice try, enemy. <laughs> and I just started going, God, you are my provider. You're the one that will bring it all to fruition. And that money will come to me back, back to me seven times seven. I think that's the forgiveness thing, but that's also okay. <laughs> seven times seven. Um, and it, you will multiply. So I, I really feel like that's for more than just me. Um, I feel I really, I have like a roaring lion inside of me this morning about people's finances. And I feel like, this church is going to be a city on a hill that cannot be hidden, that the finances are going to drip like honey from this building, um, and that there's just going to be so much breakthrough coming in this week, in this month, till the end of the year. And I'm saying 2020 is still the year of 2020. It's not changed. It's not changed. There's still a little bit of November and a lot of December, and I... I know God is not last minute. He's always on time. So we are going to say these things together. Can you get it there for me? Okay. Can you see it? Okay. Do you understand? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you guys are so encouraging. Thanks. <laughs> okay. And I don't want you to say it like, oh, yeah, okay, maybe. I want you to say it with such a belief that God is going to change things in your finances. Okay, even if you're really rich, like God wants to make you more rich so you can bless more people. Okay, so <laughs> here we go. Okay, God is giving me specific wisdom on how to get out of debt. I am abundantly blessed in every area of my life. I am trustworthy with money, and therefore God can trust me with his resources. I am abundantly blessed in every area of my life. I have access to an unlimited amount of resources. God's riches are currently being released into my life. I invest extravagantly into the future. I free others from financial debt when I hear of a need. I am happy to sow into it. Amen. 
Amen. Awesome. May you guys, please, and if there's a testimony, share it. Tell us what God has done. I'm so expectant. I'm so ready to see what God's going to do. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that God is our provider. So, yeah, while the announcement video is playing, you guys can put lack of money in the monkey. Okay. <laughs> Well, good morning, everyone. Is there any happy people in the place this morning? Someone say fire. So good to see you here this morning. You know what? Something just shifted in the atmosphere. Something shifted. Something is still shifting. If it hasn't shifted yet, it's going to shift in your life. You're never going to be the same again. So good to see you all this morning, and this morning is a, is a, a double special morning. Um, you know, this is, this is the year of the mask, let's just laugh at that. Ah. <laughs> in fact, in the spiritual realm, the only guy who's wearing a mask is the devil, because he's ashamed, he's hiding. We just say that there's no sick one amongst us. Yeah, let's just say that again. There will be no sick amongst us. The Spirit of God inside of us is greater than any sickness, any disease, any virus that will try and attempt to come and steal from us. But uh, this morning, um, as you know, we've had so many great plans for 2020. We still do. And uh, we just... Just celebrate uh, the passion and excitement in this house. And uh, so this year we, we've had so many um, great plans, and then COVID came. Most of you know, if you're part of this house, that this year we celebrate 20 years of God adventure. 20 glorious years. And as one of our apostolic leaders, Bill Bennett, always says, God is still on his throne, the devil is on his own, and we are in the Holy Go zone. That's still true. But uh, Jen, why is this morning so special? It's really special because we've got the founders of God Adventure with us today. The mother and father of this house. So, you know, it's such a privilege to host them. Um, uh, we, we're going to introduce them and then we've got a, a, a video that we're going to show. 
Sorry, I'm, I'm the sun man's talking to me at the back. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, I'm good. Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm going to just kick us off. You know, they are a very significant part of my life. Um, I was 17 years old when I left home and I went to university. And I, I, I was on a bus and got off at, at Rhodes all alone. And I was in a back brace. I was in a fiberglass back brace from here to here. And the, the doctors had picked up that my spine was in a very bad condition. And unless they intervened quite quickly, I was looking at serious spinal surgery. And I arrived as a 17-year-old all alone um, at Rhodes University, and I was very afraid. I'm going to get emotional. And... This is where I met this couple. And I can say, I don't think I would be here today if it wasn't for you. And they took me in and they loved me. And yeah, I, through their pastoring, I encountered Jesus. And after I graduated from university, I went to England and we became, I married and we became missionaries <laughs> in, in China. And uh, some stuff happened to me in China and it faced some personal challenges. And we came back to South Africa and I was again in, a, in a, not a good space at all. And God called us to East London. And by then, Nigel and Debbie had left Gramstown. They had planted a church in Gramstown, then they had left, and they had come, and they had started a church here in East London, which was his people, his people, East London. It was planted, uh, what, 30th, I think you opened the 30th of July, 2000. And so we arrived in 2003, and um, we were, we were, I was quite broken. I was quite broken at that time. I was suffering from extreme depression, and I was on medication, and I, I just, I didn't, we didn't see a way forward for us. You know, our, our dreams of, of being missionaries in China just hadn't worked out the way we had hoped. And again, Nigel and Debbie opened their arms to us. They took us in, and they loved me whole again. So, you know, we, we, we want to honor them for what they carry. They are an amazing they carry so much in the spirit. They carry an apostolic and a prophetic grace. They are fire starters. Um, in, in 2007, we just, we felt the stirring of the Lord. And I think all of us, we were tired in ministry. And uh, um, we had c come to the end of ourselves. We had been doing all the programs and we had been doing all the, all the things that we were supposed to do. And it, it just doesn't seem to be working very well. And, uh, and we, well, we just started, we just gave up <laughs> in a way. We gave up on trying to do things in our own strength. And we went into just an amazing, amazing time of renewal and encounter and revival. And they are fire starters. They carry fire. And so I just want you to, um, I feel Kone is going to say something, but just open your hearts to receive them, um, be expectant because something is going to ignite in this place today. Be expectant for um, just new levels of encounter, just deeper, deeper levels of, yeah, just revelation, the face of Jesus. So good. Um, as Jen said, um, you know, much, a lot of what we're experiencing now what we are experiencing is because of the sacrifice that they've made. It's because of the commitment of them to, to stand up every day and, and say, yes, God, we'll give you our everything. And um, we are part of the, the Bethel movement. We are part of that network. But 10 years ago, nobody knew about that. But Nigel and Debbie were one of the, I think they were probably the first couple from South Africa who ventured over the pond to Bethel and started tapping into that stream, it radically impacted their life. And there's a lot of criticism. In fact, I think two-thirds, how many? Two-thirds of our church literally left when renewal broke out here, but they refused. They said, Holy Spirit, we don't, 
We don't care what it's going to cost us. We want more of you. And we just want to honor them for that, for paying that price and opening something open for, for many of us that we just take for granted now. So, so great to have them here before. I'm going to ask them to come up. We're just going to um, watch this one last thing. I just also want to introduce, they've got three, be- they have three beautiful daughters with them. Unfortunately, their son Daniel couldn't join us. But they brought Jess and Jemima and Mystery. And it's just so wonderful to see you again. So we welcome you to. God Adventure always speaks special to us. I remember leaving Grahamstown in 2000, starting the church in August, the end of August at the Regent Hotel with the waves crashing behind us and then going on and growing in the Orient Mall and finally getting our own venue at Inverleith Terrace. God Adventure might not always have been the name of the church, but it's always been the character of the church. And we just wish you many great adventures in God as the years go on. Happy 20th birthday, God Adventure. What an exciting weekend of celebration you had. And can you believe it was 20 years ago that we met together for the first time at the Regent Hotel. And look how far you've come. Such an exciting season. And so sending you lots of love from Pretoria and wishing you all the best for the next season ahead in God and keep adventuring. God bless and bye. Yay, God Adventure. Congratulations. 20 special years together worshiping with you. It's been fun. Yes, congratulations, God Adventure, on reaching your 20th year. And we look forward to God's continued presence uh, in our meetings for many, many more years to come. The inside of that building then uh, was, was full of wooden pews, uh, old-fashioned pipe organ with the pipes all in the back. Um, but uh, so this uh, changed after a while. Uh, carpets we put in, the stages changed, uh, chairs were brought in, and uh, aircons and repaint uh, followed along. The only thing left to remind us of those days is our existing pulpit, which is made from some of the panels uh, that we are. Happy birthday, God Adventure. Happy 20th anniversary to a wonderful church, a wonderful community coming from here virtually. Uh, We just wanted to wish you a happy 20th anniversary. We were there from the beginning. Actually, you were there from the beginning. In the days of the beachfront. I don't know if you guys remember that, but we actually got married also in God Adventure 16 years ago. Mm-hmm. But we have been so blessed and we carry you guys so close to our hearts and we're just so excited to see the new positions God is taking you here and we know He has so much more to do. Right, so, happy anniversary, happy 20th birthday. We hope to see you soon. Uh, we just wanted to wish you the very best and many, many blessings. Very big happy birthday, God Adventure, sending loads of love to you from Chris and Ali Kingsley uh, in KZN. I can't believe it's been two decades since we were the original group of founding members in the church. Um, so many happy memories and so grateful to Nigel and Debs for all they did for us in those early years. So many happy memories and also to Corne and Jenny. We're sending loads of love to you guys today and hope it's a really big celebration. It's an extra special place for us because it's where we met and I think we were the first couple to start courting and dating and, oh no, not dating, dating. courting. And then we got married and it's 15 years later. So guys, sending you so much love and um, it'll always be a very, very special place for us. So God bless and may there be another fruitful 20 years. Lots of love. Bye. Bye. Hi, my name is Tammy. I arrived at God Adventure in 2001. It was known as His People Christian Church at the time. I've been in the church for 20 years and I've done some crazy things in my days. For example, most of my soul group decided we were going to the Milky Lane. 
but in our pajamas. Most of my memories are of relationships with people. I truly believe God intended me to be a God adventure. It's part of my destiny in God. I've made lifelong friends. The leaders then and now are very special, awesome people who I value dearly. I am so grateful for all the leaders, past Nigel and Debbie, and present Jen Cornet, for the love shown and for showing Jesus to me. Happy birthday, God Adventure. Hi, God Adventure East London. I'm Ashley. I'm Maita. I'm Jenna. I'm Aiden. We used to be part of His People East London and we're involved with Bible School as well as the media department. We're really thrilled and honoured to be able to uh, speak into your 20th birthday celebrations. So on behalf of all of us from Canada, we wish you all a very happy 20th birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Isn't that awesome? I don't know if you saw the trend there. Many people who were part of it got married. I'm just going to put it out there. If you want to get married, if you're desperate, just come to God Adventure. It's going to happen here. It's going to happen here. I just want to give a, a big shout out to our media team. You guys are just absolutely incredible. Um. I actually want to honor Neil especially. He did so much hard work in through um, this week. Uh, Micheline, his beautiful wife, Nats, Sean, Neil there at the back. You guys are incredible. Our hosting team, thank you so much. And in worship, come on. Teams, you guys did so well. And then also welcome to everyone who's joining us. Live on Facebook this morning. Won't you just turn around, look there at the screen, just wave at our, our live audience. People are tuning in from all around the world, Australia, the UK, Malaysia. Maybe a few people from Kanubi, I don't know. It's going to be powerful. Thank you so much for joining us. And so without further ado, won't you just uh, give it up to the incredible Desmond family and um, welcome Jessica as she come up. And Nigel and Debbie. Come on, we can do better than that. Okay. All right. Wow, this is just such a treat. Um, start. <laughs> okay, let's <just> pray. <laughs> uh, Father God, we just want to thank you. I just want to thank you for what you've done over the last 20 years. We are just so incredibly grateful, so incredibly grateful. And we give you all the glory and um, just so incredibly grateful grateful for all the people that we've had the privilege of, of loving. Not, I mean, everyone has in, in this congregation, not just us, but <laughs> along this journey. Yeah. Some of you have been here from the beginning and some are halfway, only maybe some of you only the last couple of months. But we all, Father, thank you yeah. for the privilege of, um, of loving you, learning more about you, loving each other, developing relationships, um, and learning more about one another. We're so grateful for all that you've poured into our lives through each other, because we realize that this church is um, people. Amen. And we're just thankful for every single one, every single one that has been built in whether in the beginning or at the end or in the middle. And we just want to thank you for it. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for the outpouring that you've poured in this church. And we thank you for pouring it out all over the world, actually. Yeah. 
all over the world as people have come in and gone out from this place. We just look in awe at what you've done through us, and we're just thankful, so incredibly thankful. And so, Lord, we just commit this morning to you this beautiful time that we have with you, and we just invite you here to have your way with us. We thank you, and we welcome you here, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God of love, we just release right now your rivers of love to flow in this place. Amen. And just, it just feels so amazing to be here. Um, I used to lean against this pulpit <laughs> in just this way almost every Sunday. Sometimes I needed it more than other times. You know, um, just looking at this pulpit, I, I just remember there was a profound theological disagreement at one stage in this church that just raged in the leadership team. And um, I just prayed. I said, Lord, help Corne. He'll understand one day which is the right pulpit. And um, my, my father-in-law actually built this pulpit. And uh, uh, actually, I'm, I got a text during worship from my nephew saying, need to mention the pulpit that Pa built, so Ethan, there you go. But Corne finally got the revelation. You know, I just want to, I just want to honor this place, this church, this leadership. You know, um, we had so much fun in this place, and we had, we had some challenges, but we had so much fun, and I think of God Adventure, I just, I just think of the fun we had in the place in pursuing God, and you've just really kept and treasured that. You've done such a fantastic job of stewarding the presence and making it presence central. And, um, yeah, we've, we've, got some, we've got some long, long history together. Whoa. Which I best not think about too hard. Right now. <laughs> oh. I just, oh, I just really want to take a moment to, oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay, I can do this. I, so it brings back a, a memory. I, there was a, a particular service when the presence had just broken out at God Adventure. And uh, whew, and um, a group of people came from another church um, in town which had sent out the message to the congregation. And they had said, and I quote, you need to check your brains at the door when you go to God Adventure. Do you remember that? And, it, 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 and I saw them come in and settle down at a particular path in the congregation. And it was an evening service. And I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them. I have got a brain. I'm, I'm going to preach such a good sermon to, uh, today. And I got up into the pulpit. And somebody, one of my children, had given me a prophetic word in that day. And as I ran out the door, she said, Dad, I've got a prophetic word for you written down. And I, just, and I put it in my iPad. And she said, but don't read it until you get to church. So I've got it on my iPad, and I open my iPad, and I see this folded up piece of paper. I think, well, I better release the prophetic word. And I open it up, and it's, a, it's one of those little Holy Ghost time bombs. And so I tell the people, just pray for one another. You know, just greet someone near you. And I read this prophetic word, and this one has written, Dad, go forth and get schnockedeth, hammereth, and drunketh. And I read the prophetic word, and the presence of God just drops on me in the pulpit. I'm over here. And the presence of God drops on me, and I collapse on the pulpit like this while everyone's greeting and everything. And they turn around, and they see the senior pastor of God Adventure in the pulpit, and I'm going. And, and, and I'm, I, I, I'm just. I mean, honestly, it was just the worst moment. It, it looked like I was doing something indecent to the pulpit. It was horrible. 
It was horrible, and I'm, I'm so aware of it. But Holy Ghost has got my head stuck, and I'm looking at the group of people that have come from that church. I'm literally looking at them, and I'm going, and I can't look away. You, you know that moment, you're just trying to look away, and I'm like, oh, Jesus, no. Oh, Jesus, no. Please, Jesus, please. Please, Jesus. And I'm pleading. I'm pleading. Not today, Holy Spirit. Not today. First and time I, I got in trouble for a prophetic word. And uh, yeah, it's your fault. And I just gave up and I collapsed on the floor. And we didn't preach that Sunday. Corne came up and said, we're going to do a fire tunnel. <sighs> and the whole group got up and left the church with, we knew it. <laughs> but you know, it's one of the things I treasure about, about this house is that You've made the main thing the main thing. And in the kingdom of God, the main thing is loving God and loving people. And that's something that these guys have always done so, so well and so passionately. Um, I don't think they even realize they do it. They just, it's just who they are and they do it so well. And so we're just so grateful to be here. Um. We just also want to just honor all the people that have been with us through the years. Some of them you saw up here, Ed and Corinda were um, pastors, well, Ed was, and then uh, Maita and um, Ashley were elders. And, I mean, even, well, all, actually all these people were leaders in some way or the other. And then, of course, Jenny and Cornet. Um, Scott and Yolanda, just, you know, we, we, this um, God adventure wouldn't be what it is with, without them. And Kone and Jenny just um, carrying on since we left, just doing such, they actually, when they arrived, immediately when they came to our church, we just felt their support, um, their faith joined with us. And, you know, like the Bible says, um, when you, on your own, you can do so much, but every time someone gets added, you can do so much more. And so they, really what we gained um, over the years since they came also was so much directed to what they pulled down from heaven. Um, and we're so thankful, so thankful for their friendship over the years and um, all their love and support while we're here um, in, in um, East London. London. <laughs> So, uh, this morning, we, what we thought we'd do, because I'm aware that we, we, have, we, we have a message to share, we thought we'd tell you a family story, and um, we'd preach off of that. Um, we, we love, uh, well, this is kind of a, you know, this is a, um, some, you know, some assembly required kind of story. So, Jess is going to start, I'm going to uh, continue, and then uh, Debs will, you know, land the plane. Why don't you take it away, my girl? Well, I thought I'd start as a completely unbiased third-party opinion in this story. <laughs> Basically, we wanted to start on a trip that we took, uh, when was it? A couple years back. Two years back. Two years back. And um, as a family, and it's, that's a miracle story in and of itself, but as a family, we were able to go on a trip to Italy. And we were so excited, and the Lord just really blessed us with us, and there was this couple that we knew relatively, we didn't know Friends all, of hey, friends. We didn't know them. Friends of friends. And they said, hey, we've got this beautiful apartment in Sicily. Um, it's, you know, it's a, you can stay there for free. You can go and stay. And we thought, oh, my word, like, oh, praise Jesus. This is amazing. So we embarked. We flew into Rome, which is up. Now, Sicily is, the, is like the little bully that the boot is kicking. So it's like way down at the bottom. So we were like, oh, this is great, family road trip, which is always good in theory. Um, (laughs) And I'm not going to lie, our family is pretty fun. Like, we do have a lot of fun. But to travel from the top of Italy all the way down to the bottom with six Desmonds in the car, with all of our luggage, and my parents were going to be there for three months, um, (laughs) was an adventure. And it's one of those stories where we look back now and we laugh and we preach on it, and we say, oh, that was such a good memory. 
but it's one of those stories that in the time, you don't realize it's going to be one of those stories that you laugh and preach on. <laughs> <laughs> so we started off at the top, Happy Go Lucky had our songs playing. We had a seven-seater seven car, but it was like a seven-seater car. But we hadn't, we hadn't packed so well, no. so we needed five of those seats for the luggage. <laughs> so it went like this. Mom, Dad, Daniel, who's my brother, who's got the most enormous shoulders, me, mystery, and Jemima was in the boot, <laughs> in one of those little fold-up seats that's like this big. <laughs> you couldn't even see her. She had a suitcase on top of her. You could see her little eyes sticking out. <laughs> But Don't no give one else too much fit. detail, darling. Remember, there's still mom and I. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's an important detail. We have to say where Jemima is. Yes. Also helps, Jemima gets really car sick. But we couldn't really hear her because she was really far at the back. So anyway, we're driving down. We've had an interesting road down to Sicily. And we finally get there. It's like 9 o'clock at night. Everyone's exhausted. But we're excited, but it's too, too late for dinner. So we decide, okay, we're going to stop. We're going to have a little bit of pizza. Then we're going to go to our Sicilian villa by the sea. <laughs> so we had our pizza. We all got in the car, drove. We're driving. We're like, okay, this doesn't look very nice. We start driving, and we're in this really run-down part of this rural village. <laughs> And there's like chain mail fences and broken down buildings. And we're driving, we're like, oh, well, we're probably just passing through on the way to the villa. <laughs> and we're getting deeper and deeper. And then the GPS says, you have arrived. And we were like, can we go back to Rome? <laughs> and so we're like, no, no, it's fine. You know, it's probably just once we get inside, it'll be fine. <laughs> it's now 10 o'clock at night. So mom, we dumped the dad, dumped the kids out. The shops were closing in five minutes. So they said, we're going to go and get food. You go inside, find the place. You'll be fine. So I'm ushering now a very grumpy and tired posse of children up the stairs. We unlock the door. We go in, and I'm like, oh. We counted the beds, a double bed, a single bed, and like the base of a bed with chains on it. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Daniel was optimistic. He's like, it's fine. We can sleep on the couch. There wasn't a couch. <laughs> it's fine. We could put some of the towels from the bathroom on the chain of the bed. It'll be fine. I was like, oh, help. <laughs> um, and also, the whole way down, Dan had happened to be reading a book on the Italian mafia and had so been cracking all, jokes. All the way down, I'm making jokes about... Uh, Tonight, you sleep with the fishes, which, which was very really funny. Which were really funny at 2 o'clock in the bright sunlight. It and was not funny. in the middle of a rural Sicilian village, listening to what we later found out were fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh, we're going to die. Mom and Dad aren't there. I don't have a phone. I'm like, they could have been murdered in the street, for all I know. I'm hearing gunshots. Daniel and Jemima are making a huge noise, and I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to put Mystery to sleep. It's going to be fine. I'm just going to put it to sleep. I'm like, Mystery, come, let's get in the bath. Get to the bath. There's hair in the bath. <laughs> I was like, we're going straight to bed. It's fine. <laughs> Take Mystery to the bed. And I'm like, do I put a towel down on this bed? Because it's like, you know, that like just, ooh. <laughs> it was like rusty and dirty, and there were stains on the quilt. And I was like, okay. I had the most amazing noise. Mom and Dad came back. I was like, we've got a serious problem. There are three beds. There are six of us. There are gunshots outside. And mom was like, it's fine, guys. We have done that. This, don't, you know, and we were like, no, you know, we can do this. And dad was like, I have been to worse places. It's like, we, we can do this. And mom says, we can do this. Come, mystery, come just get in the bed. She pulls back the bed thing like this. There's mold on the pillow. <laughs> so it goes like this. No, guys, we can do this. Nigel, we can do this. Nigel, I can't do this. <laughs> so straight from that, we didn't even replace the duvet. We just like, no, in the car, back in the car. I don't know where we're going, but we're going away from here. And so we all parcel down the stairs as quickly as we can, trying to like not make too much noise. A very difficult thing in our family. It's like 11 o'clock at night now. 
I'm trying to be quiet not to wake the sleeping mafia on the way down the stairs. I won't get in the car. Dad types into Airbnb, like just anywhere else nearby. There's got to be something in this town. So we find a little place. It says it's nearby. 20 minutes. 20 Max. minutes. Max. Cool. We're like, oh, thank goodness. Chuck Jemima back in the boot. Didn't even buckle her in. Just threw a suitcase on top of her. Got in the car. <laughs> Jemima's in there. We start driving and driving and driving. And then there's no street lights. And then it disappears. And let me tell you, the Italian drivers. Okay, the Italians are very nice until they can get I, into a car. I, they I just I go for it. I, I must just say, Italians are the nicest, friendliest, coolest people until they get into a motor car. And then they go stark, raving mad. Pazzo, pazzo. Literally, it's like, hey, pazzo, pazzo, hey, hey, move out of the way. <laughs> I, I tell you what, they make South African drivers look like the best drivers in the no, world. I tell you what. Yeah. So we get in the car and we're like driving down this road and the road's getting smaller and smaller. The grass is getting taller and taller on the side of the road and we're driving out an hour. It's an hour and ten minutes. <laughs> and we're just finally getting further out into the middle of absolutely nowhere. Jemima's feeling sick. She's like kind of sobbing in the back. I'm trying to keep mystery asleep and I'm thinking... This looks a lot like the beginning of all those CSI thingies that I've watched. <laughs> you know, just before, like, the opening credits and, like, the morning where the crime scene ta tape comes across. It's like that little pre-thing of how the South African family got murdered in the bush. <laughs> it's like, and I remember just thinking, like, no one would ever find our bodies. <laughs> it's like, this is very familiar. So I'm driving around, and I'm like, oh, that's ridiculous. Like, it's fine. It's just, we're going to be at there. This, my resolve kind of... Uh, dissipated a bit when I hear my mom and dad like quietly praying in tongues in the front seat. Nothing scares a pastor's child more than that. I was just like, oh, <laughs> okay. I was just like, oh, God, I don't shut up. <laughs> and I'm just there with Jemima stroking this tree, like, okay. Jemima's in the back, like, oh, I feel sick. <laughs> so we drive along and we make this little turn. And mom turns to dad, trying to be discreet. Oh, Nige, looks like we're going down another fun road. Fun road being like a two-track. There's more potholes than road. The grass is up here. And there's Italian drivers coming like 200 k's an hour straight towards you. And Jemima I, just I yells from the back. i just got to give some context what the fun road is about. Just, to, just to understand it. In our family, we have made a lifetime habit of we travel to look for fun. To look for the positive, uh, the, you know, we, we travel and we, we pursue fun. So on this trip, we kept on saying, guys, we're on a fun road. It's an adventure. We, we're looking for fun, all right? So we kept on telling the kids, oh, this is a fun road. Oh, this is a fun road. And sometimes that was because we needed to look harder than really, we usually really needed hard. to look to find the fun, okay? So that's the context of a fun road. Come around, mom goes, looks like we're going down another fun road. Jemima just screams from the back. She goes, I don't like fun roads. <laughs> I remember at that stage, tensions were like this high. Mom puts her hand around, dad saying, spins her head around back. She's like, nobody likes fun roads. <laughs> so we finally get there and we're just like, we're past it at midnight. Like, we get there, and we start getting towards this town. And the town has never looked so beautiful. Like these soft little lights and like the sandstone. They've decorated for a festival. So there's like little fairy lights everywhere. And we're like, oh, oh my goodness. Like this is just the most amazing thing. Like just looks so beautiful. GPS is going, turn right, turn left. We're making our way there. And then we go into a smaller road. And then we turn around, and we're going up this place. And Daniel just goes, guys. We're in someone's yard. <laughs> <laughs> the GPS had directed us literally to drive through, through someone's garden. <laughs> like, so we're now in the middle, and the GPS, like, the little flag is like, bing. And I'm like, uh-oh. Okay, we'll just, let's just get through real fast. So we're driving. Yeah, that's how we drive. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of backseat driving. And so we get there, and we get to the opposite side of their garden. You can see their fences and their little flowers, and you're like, okay. But then there's this 
hill, this gravel hill. It's like this big. And we're like, are we going to make it up? <laughs> we're like, oh, my God. So we go, midnight. <laughs> the Through has come down. These and people we come garden. down again. We couldn't get up the hill. <laughs> and now we're making this heck, heck of a noise. <laughs> midnight. In the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so we're like, okay, we got a light in the car. Everyone out, everyone out. So everyone piles out. We're in the middle of someone's yard now. There's the fence. There's the little... The pic- car sliding fence. down the hill. Car sliding down the hill. We get out. Jemai, Aunt Eva's like, you know, shh, I don't wake people up. We don't explain in English what we're doing in the middle of the night, in the middle of this town. Jemima didn't get that memo. She was skinny and she comes to you. <laughs> Sits down. <laughs> She's crying. Mom and Daniel push the car up the hill just as I turn around, see two men coming out of their house like this. Dad starts driving while we're shutting the door just as two little dogs come running out. We get in the car, there's two dogs chasing us, and we're driving away. And then we actually did see, it says, you have arrived. And we went up, and the sign was lit up. It was Pignadora Hotel. I'm telling you, I thought I'd seen heaven at that point. I walked in, and I was like, oh, we did die. <laughs> <laughs> We came in, there was a pack of six South Africans coming in. Luckily, Dad actually speaks a bit of Italian, otherwise I don't know what we would have done. We came in a little traumatized with like mounds of baggage. Like, hi, did you get our message? Please, can we stay here? <laughs> Do you have a stable or something? Like, we'll take that. <laughs> um, and we got in and they checked us in and we went to bed and we... Work, and it was like, dog, we went to bed. <laughs> and then we really saw the inside <laughs> of the hotel room. We were so tired. And the next morning, I remember waking up, going to the window, was opening up the c- curtain. And I realized we were right on top of, like, this mountaintop. Right, right on top. And I remember opening up and seeing just, just, like, so far. Like, I could see little individual Italian villages all the way dotting on the hills. We could see the small little town that we'd invaded the night before. And it was one of the most beautiful places I have ever been to in my entire life. It was absolutely gorgeous. And we ended up actually staying there for another five, couple, nights. five nights. Five nights. Um, I don't know. People would ask me, like, how did you get here? We went down into the village walking around and People would kind of stop and look at us. We went into a little coffee shop. Okay, I'll take it from now, I think. (laughs) Dad met the mayor. That's what a zoo animal do, though, because no one ever came there because you can't get there. So, yeah, thank you, baby. So, (laughs) so we want to tell you a story about fun roads because, you know, life... Life is filled with fun roads. Isn't 2020 a bit of a fun road? Hey? We've had three earthquakes in Cape Town. I mean, I've never heard of earthquakes in Cape Town, you know? Actually, the last one happened on my wife's birthday. It was awesome, you know? I just woke up and said, sweetie, did did the earth move for you too? Um, Better move off that topic, otherwise I'll be in trouble. <laughs> and, um, man, I tell you, it's just, been, it's just been crazy. It's been one of those crazy, uh, crazy years. But, you know, sometimes life takes you down roads that you did not expect to go down. You know, life is not always what you expect it to, uh, to be, you know. You, we have these glorious visions at times. And we think that, that God has said to us, listen. This is where you're going, and you invest your heart in where, you, uh, where you're going because you think, you think it's all about where you're going. But when you get to where you're going, you find out that where you're going was not where you were going. <laughs> Anyone ever had an experience like that where you, you get there and you suddenly find out that actually the Lord had stricked you? He just gave you a direction. He said, it's that way. It's going to be amazing. And you head down that way. You're like, oh, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. This is a little freaky, but that's going to be amazing. And when you get there, 
what you get is entirely different to what you expected. And you know, God has taken us on so many journeys like this and taught us so many lessons uh, along that. And we'd just like to share some of those with you. You know, when we were traveling, uh, uh, when we were traveling there and when we hit those Sicilian uh, roads, there was so many uh, parts of us that we just started investing into regret. You know, regret can be a part of your decision, can be a part of your journey. Those journeys like, man, why, why did I even decide to come down here? I mean, were there not even, was there not a decent bed and breakfast just outside of Rome? I mean, it's not like we needed to travel down the entire length of Italy to find the worst accommodation in the world. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you know, <laughs> but just because the accommodation was free and they said it was a villa, surely we would have saved... And if we just used the, the petrol, we could have found something better, uh, better than this. Why have I done this to my family? Have I put my family at risk now? Is my, is my family going to be at risk? And because the, the mafia stories, I Googled it. I was like, yeah. is, how real is the mafia in Italy? And you Google it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They're pretty hardcore. They actually do exist. It's not just in, in the movies. But the article I read said, don't worry. It's only, uh, you know, in, in the kind of rural areas. In the tourist areas, you'll be fine. So I was making jokes about that at, in, in the daylight, which were really funny. At 12 o'clock at night in rural Sicily, it was no longer funny. And, and you, you start hitting these places of regret. And you know what? Shame and condemnation on your journey are things that you need to repudiate because they will rob you of the joy of the journey that God has for you. And I want to tell you, your God is so good that He has a plan. You might not know where you're about to end, uh, end up. And you see, the enemy comes to you along your journey and he, and he says, hey, you know what? Man, your, uh, your, your family doesn't have enough baggage. Let's squeeze in a bit of shame there. Let's put in some regret there. Let's put some condemnation uh, in there. L that's, that's just the thing you need to make this journey go so, uh, so well. And I want to just encourage you to, to do a regular checkup and, find, and, and just check, has the enemy invested your life in any place with shame, Regret and condemnation. Because I wanted to say, those decisions of shame and regret that you, oh, I wish I had never done that. I wish I had never said that. You did it. It's over. It's in the past. And the cross has dealt with them. You can't go and unmake certain decisions. But the journey ahead, you get to make and you get to choose. And you know what? We, we, we're driving down those Italian roads. I tell you what. They make the Eastern Cape roads and taxi drivers look like four-lane highways and the most responsible people on earth. I tell you what, you, you, you literally, you drive down Sicily and it's like a one-lane one uh, thing and it's winding like this through, uh, <laughs> through, the, through the mountains. And it's 11 o'clock at night and they have one speed. It's like foot flat. And you just see these headlights coming out of the dark. And normally it's a truck. I don't know why. It's a truck. And, and this is how the Desmond family would go past those trucks. You'd see the lights coming. And we'd, like, we'd drive to, as far to the edge as possible. And all of us would just go, Aah! And, you know, bearing in mind, you know, there's, there's, there's really high grass on this side. And you know there's a cliff on that side. And we just go, Aah! And then you'd open your eyes. And that was me too. I was driving, you know. I'd just close my eyes and pray, you know. But you know, the amazing thing is we got past every one of those trucks. Somehow, God made a way. And I want to tell you, for those of you in that place right now in your life, you're screaming your way through, around a blind corner. The grass is too high. You don't know where you are. You're looking out. There doesn't seem to be any sign of life or civilization. And you are convinced you're going to die. I want to tell you, your God is better than you understand, and He's taking you somewhere good. Other passengers that climb in the car, questions. Questions like, God, why this? Why? Why? Why this? Why me? Why now? Why did this happen? I want to tell you, 
those things will drain your faith. They will not add to your journey. They will not add to your journey. Ten years ago, um, we, one of our biggest wives sitting on the front row now, uh, mystery, mystery was born. And for some of you, yes, that's you, my girl. And uh, she was born with some challenges. She was born with some challenges. But uh, those of you who walked with us in that period of time will remember we actually pursued having another child because the Lord gave us a promise and said he had a special treasure of a child for us. And uh, we had three children at the time, and um, we decided, okay, we're going to have one more child. And then all of a sudden, it seemed like I'd forgotten the recipe. I, I, like, uh, and we tried for five years to, to fall pregnant, but I was doing all the same things I did the first three times, and uh, nothing seemed to be working out. And, uh, my insecurity mounted, all kinds of things. It, it was just, it was horrible. And then... One amazing day, I can remember coming in this church and in this pulpit, and I remember sharing, and I said, you know, the first time Debbie felt pregnant, this is how I felt. Second time, this is how I felt. Third time, this is how I felt. And now, this time, and this whole church just exploded and just rejoiced because it had been a journey we'd been on together, just trusting God for this breakthrough, and they knew what it meant to my family. But then when, when my little girl was born, we were so excited, but we realized we were on a journey. And I got hit with, why? Why, Lord? Why the challenges? Why the, uh, I didn't know what was coming. I want to tell you, that journey has been an amazing journey. That journey has added to our family immeasurably. It has changed who we are. It has changed each of my children. I wouldn't go back and change a single thing. It's the most amazing thing. And I want to tell you, some of you are journeying with those journeys. Why? There's some things you don't know yet. There's some things you don't understand yet. But your God is a good God, and He's building into your life and taking you and giving you things, treasures that you haven't asked for. One of the prophetic promises at the time, someone came and said, said to us, Nigel, I hear the Lord saying to you, I'm giving you the treasures of uh, hidden in darkness. You have got treasures awaiting you that are hidden in your darkness. Along that trip, we had to trust our GPS. It was a scary thing. So, I mean, when you're driving there and the GPS goes, turn left, and you look. And as far as you can tell, there's nothing next to you but a goat track. And you're going, Hmm, are you sure about this? <laughs> hmm, could I have another option, please? And that's literally what we did. That's how we ended up in that person's garden. Literally tracking across a person's garden in Mafiaville, we were convinced. And car sliding down, down, uh, down the hill, children uh, uh, screaming, convinced we were going uh, to die. But you know what? In the light of the next morning, when we saw where we had gone and where we had got to, I mean, all of our family, of all the places we went to in, uh, in Italy, that's the one place we all want to go back to. Trust your GPS, your God positioning system. God's got you on a journey. And he, he will tell you to turn down some roads where you go, are you sure, Jesus? Jesus, let me explain. <laughs> Goat tracks and me, hmm, we're not so cool. But I want to tell you, your God is a faithful God. He knows where he's taking you. You, you, the, the greatest values in life. You see, we, we've invested, so much of us invest our lives in this, journey, this destination. And it's, it's, like, it's like, you know, and when I get there, I'm going to be important. When I get there, that's going to be uh, significant. You know, if I get this accolade, if I get uh, that promotion. But you know what? The greatest thing in life is the journey. The greatest thing in life is the journey. That brings, us, brings me to my next point, and it's this. Who is in the car 
with you. Because that's the most important thing in the end. Who are you in relationship? Who's in the car with you? Because that, and our family, we still, we will talk about that trip. Our family grew stronger. It grew tighter. The love that we shared. I mean, you know, we still talk about Jemima's primeval scream in the garden. It literally, she got out the car and we just heard, Aah! and everyone had been like, shh, shh, quiet, don't wake up the mafia. Of course, Jemima gets on. She's like, Aah! people in North Africa were waking up. Boats of refugees coming across the Mediterranean turned back and changed their mind. <laughs> and of course, we didn't help by going, shh, 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 shh. But, you know, life, when we get to heaven one day, the Lord's not going to ask you about your accolades, your awards. What He's going to ask you is this. Did you trust me? Did you believe I was a good God? And did you give your life to me? Because 1 Corinthians 13 verse 13 says, and the greatest of these is faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Sorry, I, I have a drinking problem. The Bible makes me drunk. Honey, you need to come up and transition soon. I'm going to just give one last thing. You know, in your journey, it's not so much where you go to that's important. It's how you go. The ro- you can't always choose the road you go down. Sometimes you choose and it feels like you've chosen badly. But it's how you go that makes all the difference in the world. Life is beautiful, but it's how you choose to live it that makes it beautiful. You're not a victim. You're not a victim of where you are. You're not a victim in life. You are victorious, and you get to choose. And I want to encourage you to to travel with trust, travel with hope, travel with love, travel with gratitude for every moment of every day. So I'm just going to wrap it up. Um, what Nigel was saying is that, um, you know, I've realized the, the longer I've lived that actually um, life is more about the journey than the destination. And we find our greatest life on the journey, not at the destination. And often what happens is, is that um, <clears throat> our goals and our destination, what we feel is our destination, our destiny, actually becomes an idol in our life. And, you know, thinking that when we get there, then I will be enough, then I'll have enough, et cetera, et cetera. But usually there's just, when you get there, there's just another destination, another horizon. And you just land up living your life from one um, goal to the other. And what I found in my life is I often have become so focused and busy on the goal, the destination, that um, I've missed out on the moment that I'm in right now. Um, And um, I've become more and more aware of that and more and more determined to be present in the moment and to live in in the moment that I'm in. Um, Jesus was never too busy um, going, getting to his next goal that he missed the present. Um, Um, what I, <laughs> no. um, the thing that I love about um, looking at Jesus' life and how he lived his life, I sort of look and I think, you know what, our purpose needs to um, supersede our goal and our destiny. Our, su- our purpose needs to be on the journey. Obviously, Jesus' ultimate, um, you know, his life climaxed in the cross where he gave his life. Um, for us. But he wasn't so obsessed with getting to that goal. Um, In fact, 
his purpose in, um, in Acts 10, verse 38, says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, and he went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And that was God, Jesus' purpose, and he fulfilled it, and it ultimately landed up in giving his life. But it was the purpose throughout the journey that he was on. And I, you know, I think you know, what I'm learning is, is that we need to make sure that our purpose is bigger than our goal and our destiny um, in life. Um, you know, Jesus said um, he, his schedule was, you know, <laughs> the wind blows wherever it pleases. I only do what I see my father um, doing. And obviously in John 15, he speaks about us. Um, really living the same type of life, um, about abiding in Christ. And one of the definitions in the um, Greek, which I love about abiding, is the word um, to remain or be um, continually present. That's one of the the meanings in the Greek, to be continually present. And we see um, Jesus, he was always paying attention in the present and in the moment. Um, Purposeful people pay attention to what God is doing and pay attention to the moment and to be present in the moment. We see Jesus' life, it's sort of like zigzagged, you know. There were interruptions along the way. There were delays um, all, all the way through. And you know, sometimes we need to realize that interruptions are part of our purpose. Sometimes, if you're so focused on the goal, you might not understand that because you're not present in the moment and realizing that God is in this interruption. Like on our trip, um, we could have realized, like, oh, we've completely missed it and we've gone into regret. And, but God had a purpose in that moment. As we journeyed together, he was doing things in our family and in our hearts and ultimately he had a really good place for us um, because God works all things in our lives for good. Um, Jesus didn't seem to keep time, but he noticed, which was amazing. He was always hospitable to interruptions. I know, I'm, I, I've, I, I'm learning that. <laughs> I want to, like, I've got a goal and I want to get there and, you know, I want to plan out my, my but I've realized that actually, God's in the journey, and there's things that come up um, that God's in, you know. God's purposes and his presence often come disguised as detours, messes, and defeats. Think about that. Right? I'm going to just say that again. God's purposes and his presence often come disguised as detours, messes, and defeats. Because God's bigger than your ability to muck things up. And sometimes, you know, that um, Nigel and I, in the beginning of our ministry, actually got a prophetic word that said, God is bigger than your ability to muck things up. I want to tell you that that has been our primary prophetic word that we've gone to over the years. We often look at each other and say, God is bigger than our ability to muck this up. (laughs) Um, yeah, uh, um, we need to pay attention to how God is a foot in each, uh, in the mystery of each moment in our lives, even when they seem like we're completely off track, where we think like, this can't be God. God is there, because the Bible said, you can, he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you, even in the deepest darkness, he is light, he is there, wherever you are, he is there. But the question is, is in that moment, are you present? Are you so busy looking to get out of it that you can't find God even in darkness? It, like Nigel's talking about treasures in darkness. God is there and he is able. So my, um, I end with this. Let this exhortation. Let us be fully awake in this moment of our lives. Let us have a purpose that we can fulfill every moment of our day um, so that we can be fully awake and not miss the visitation of God in this moment. Amen.
So why don't you just lift up your hands? We just love to pray for you. Because of COVID, and uh, we want to just honor honor the house, honor the regulations. Um, we're not going to be laying hands on individuals, but you know we know that uh, the first time we ever got thoroughly blasted in um, in this uh, team, actually, we used to watch the computer together. You remember some of those early meetings? We would just get hammered in the Holy Ghost um, watching. Watch. In fact, one of the best meetings ever. Um, I, I think some of the ladies on our team were pregnant at the time, and the presence of God dropped in the meeting. And I remember myself, Corne, and Colin Dembowski all fell down and started birthing in the spirit. It was the funniest thing. And we had our pregnant wives praying for us, you know. It was so funny, you know, like this. Pregnant lady saying, breathe, honey, breathe. It was just. So we, we know that the Holy Spirit can just travel. It, it travels through the media of faith, all right? And our prayer for you today is that you would know that God is with you on your journey. Let's just lift up our hands. Holy Spirit, I just thank you for your presence. We just thank you for your presence just filling every heart, every person here right now. Jesus' name. There's some of you here today, you're on your journey, and you think you've taken a wrong turn. You are convinced that you are so lost and off course that your GPS is no longer working. <laughs> but I want to tell you that today, the eye of the Lord is on you, and He has a plan and a purpose and a destination for you. And it's a good place. And it's time for you to step back into the household of God, back into the household of faith, back into saying, Lord, I trust you and I believe you for good things and I'm going to live my life for love. And you know what? If you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus or you once gave your life to Jesus and now just stepping into this place, you find your heart is awake again. You're feeling the tug of the Lord, and you're saying to yourself, man, I miss Jesus. I miss knowing God and loving God and the faith of hope that, that uh, just comes even in hard times. If that's you today, I want you to put your hand up boldly because we want to pray for you that you can either commit your life to Jesus or come back to Jesus and recommit your life to Jesus. Is there anyone here? I don't want to leave this place without giving you the opportunity to recommit your life to Jesus if you actually... I see two hands at the back there. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else there? All right, put your hand up boldly. There's another hand over, uh, over there. There's another hand over there. Put your hand up boldly. And some of you, you're sitting there, you're wrestling with the Lord right now. I know you are. And you're wrestling and you think, oh, man, oh, I don't want to do this. I've done this so many times. Listen, if you're hearing the Lord do it, you're not doing it before people. You're doing it be uh, before God. Just put your hand up and say, yes, that's me, Pastor. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you walk down to the front and embarrass yourself. I'm just going to uh, pray for you. I just want to give you that opportunity. Thank you. I see another hand. Thank, thank you. I see another hand. Thank you. Thank you. I see another hand there. All right, is there any, uh, anyone else? Anyone else? One last moment. All right, we're going to pray together. We're going to pray together. All right, let's pray together, all, uh, all together with our brothers and sisters. Just let, say this out loud if you, if you put your hand up. Say, Jesus... Right now, I choose to trust you again with my whole heart and my whole life. I surrender to you. I give myself to you and the journey that we are on. Come into me now and fill me with your presence. In Jesus' name. Sometimes... Um we put more hope and trust in reaching in, in our destination than we do in God. And that becomes a God and an idol in our lives. So we feel like all our hope is really in our expectation of what the, what the future or what we wanted that happening. But, um, and so we need to repent of those idols. So I just want to pray with you guys. I've done it. I do it continuously because I feel like I fall back into that. 
to repent of that and to put our faith back in God again, to say like, Lord, I put my hope in you so that if it doesn't work out according to my expectations, that actually you have got good things for me, even although the thing that I expected hasn't worked out. Amen. So let's pray. Those people who want to just repent of idols, I'll be standing with you. Um, let's stand and, and, and let's repent of them. I, we're just going to make a declaration and stand if, if that's you. I'm standing. <laughs> oh. So let's just pray up to me. Father God, Father God I, realize I realize that I've put my hope in certain expectations I've had Certain expectations that I've had. Certain goals. Certain goals. I just repent of these idols. I repent of these idols. Trusting that that would fulfill me. Trusting that that would fulfill me. Instead of trusting in you. Instead of trusting in you. And so I repent of it now. So I repent of it now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I put my trust fully in you. And I put my trust fully in you. Knowing that you're a good God. Knowing that you're a good God. And that you work all things and for that good. You work all things for good. Of those who love you and have been called according to your purpose. Of those who love you and have been called according to your good purpose. And you have got good things in store for me. And you've got good things in store for me. Even if. Even if. I can't see them right now. I can't see them right now. Even if I'm in darkness. Even if I'm in darkness. Even if I'm confused. Even if I'm confused. I trust you. I trust you. I believe in you. I believe in you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So, yeah. Father God, I just ask that you would just infuse us with your hope. Mm. May we know your love that never, ever fails us. Your love that reaches us everywhere we go because nothing can separate us from your love. And Father, right now, I just pray for every person here. I break off disappointment. I break off regret. I break off shame and condemnation. The things that drain the joy from our journey. Father, we just release a double portion of joy on this house, Lord God, a double portion of joy, Lord God. We release that over this house. Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that the joy of the Lord is our strength, Lord God. So I ask, Lord, that you would strengthen every person, every family in this house with joy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Awake Amen. us, Lord. Awake us to your spirit. Awake us to Amen. this, your visitation of us wherever we are in the journey. We just say to every spirit here, awake to the visitation of the Lord in your life. In Jesus, Jesus' name. And Lord, we just bless this congregation. We bless them. We Amen. pray that you would keep them that you would make their, your face shine upon them, you'd be gracious to them, mm. and that you would give them your wonderful shalom. shalom. Uh, in, Jesus in Jesus' name. name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for having us and hosting us. Um, please know that we love you. Um, we always will, always have. You are never far from our thoughts, and uh, we are so blessed to be here. I'm just going to uh, mention, I, I forgot to mention in the beginning, we have, uh, my wife and I um, have written a couple of books. I've written a series of five children's books that are absolutely wonderful uh, for Christmas time. Actually, they tell the story of Christmas from the perspective of five animals that were there at the time. I personally interviewed them. And, um, I, and, I, and I got, uh, got their story. I recorded it, um, got it illustrated it. By, uh, it's been illustrated by another God Adventure member, um, Nicolette Stewart. And uh, each separate page of each uh, book was um, an a, a oil canvas. And so you can see the grain of the canvas on every page. These books, 
will so enrich your Christmas for years to come for, uh, for the family. And then um, for those of you who want to live a supernatural life, my wife has written an incredible life-impacting book called Supernatural Foundations. When, uh, when the supernatural really started breaking out in this church, we realized that we, start, we, we, we had to rewrite the way we did things because we were trying to plug the supernatural into our foundation. And actually, we realized we needed to rework our entire foundation. Um, so this book will help you do that. And it's, uh, it's easy to read. It's a life-changing book. And then we uh, took about 20, uh, 20-something years, Debbie and I, to write this story. Um, it's called It's a Beautiful Life. It's written by Debbie and I. It's got many of our life stories in it and many of the things that the Lord has taught us on our journey on how to make um, and how to live a beautiful life. And I believe this uh, book will really enrich you. We're uh, hearing testimonies from all over the world of people's walk with God just being radically impacted as they read these, uh, this book. Um, it's got so much faith and joy on it. Um, there's just so much in, uh, in it. And... Um, uh, Danny Silk very kindly wrote the foreword, so, you know, I, I, some of the writing at least is excellent. Um, you're going to love it. And we've got a book table at the back. Unfortunately, because we traveled by car, we've got a limited amount of stock with us. But if you do, if we do run out of stock and you want to get this, um, you can find us on our website, um, uh, No Ordinary Life, uh, www.noordinarylife.co.za, and you can order uh, online. Or the book table is at the back. My daughter, Jessica, will be manning the table. Thank you so much. Corne, over to you. Thank you so much, Nigel, Debbie, Jessica, Mystery. Don't know where Jemima is. Um, thank you so much for reminding us of the beautiful journey that we are in, the God adventure that we are on. And uh, you guys have to send us a picture of of that place that you stayed in. I think we need to frame it and put it on the wall as a reminder. When we have those moments, it's like, you know what? It's going to be good in the end. Thank you so much for joining us on Facebook Live this morning, on YouTube. Have a super Sunday. And let's just, let's just uh, honor the Desmonds one more last time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for just sowing it to us this morning, and uh, we don't want to, we want to state the obvious, but this is your house, we are family, and this will always be your house, so bless you, and thank you so much for, for taking the time to be with us this morning, God bless you, thank you so much for coming, remember, they don't want to leave with any of the resources with them, so let's, even have, uh, what a great um, opportunity just to buy Christmas presents, for someone. So 